Thank you. Welcome to the Ebony Showcase Theater, LA's hottest nightclub. We've got a great show for you tonight. For all you celebrities and beautiful people, sit back and relax. Because your limousines are all back to get stripped. Hi, fellas. Yo, homeboy, who's that skis I saw you down with? Man, that girl's program was weak, man. I dished that hog and broke to the crib. I hear that. Well, hello there, Minnie. You're looking very lovely tonight. Ooh, looks like you lost a little weight. Very little. If you said yeah, what you need, big five me to call some ocean. I said, all right now, because he's number one. He's high, he's the love through the bone. Yo, boss, check it out. Me and Joe been working on that act, we ready. Word, we ready to go on tonight, man. We gonna be fabulous. We gonna be stupefied and shit. You don't understand. I made reservations for two. There's been no mistake, sir. The table is for six. You and your date will be sharing it with two other couples. Or four other people. Or however the hell it works out. Now carry your fake Billy D. Williams looking ass in there and sit down. Next. Modine, uh, how's the ticket flow flowing? Oh, looks great. But we can't really be sure until we go over the receipts tonight in your office. Alone. been elected, nominated, and hereby presided on to introduce with honors the patriarch, huh? Mr. Ebony, the heart and soul. I want to hear it now from Mr. Uncle Ray Murphy. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Welcome to the Ebony Showcase Theater. I wanted to get here myself tonight in the worst way. So I took the Hollywood Freeway. <laughs> Believe me, that was the worst way. I was reading in the paper the other day where they asked Reagan about uh, what he thought about Beirut. And he said, well, I think he was a pretty good ball player, but my favorite was Willie Mays. <laughs> my first guest is a very young and talented and unusual man with an unusual name, and his name is Chris Rock. If you like him, Bonnie and Rubble and the rest of the Flintstones will be out here in a minute. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chris Rock. So what's up? So, I was driving down the street, saw a prostitute, asked her how much. She said, $300, I'll do anything you want. I said, bitch, paint my house. <laughs> Calm down. I had a lot of jobs before I started comedy. I used to work at McDonald's, probably the low point of my life. You ever walk at McDonald's, get online, and the guy in front of you doesn't have enough money to get anything? He's got like 40 cents, he's trying to bargain. He's like, yo, check this out, man, check this out. I got 40 cents, right? Yo, I got 40 cents. Yo, McNuggets is $1.49. Why don't you let me get one McNugget? Come on, man, you can do that, man. You can do that, man. Come on, man, look out for a brother, man. Come on, I can't get them nuggets? I hear that, I hear that, I hear that. Yo, check this out, man. Check this out, man. Yo, yo, check it out, man. I got 40 cent, right, man? A hamburger, 79 cent. Why don't you let me get the bun and a pickle? How much is that 50 cent? Take the damn seeds off the bun. I can't afford it. So I bumped into Brian Gumble the other day. 
I bet if somebody told Brian Goble he was black, he'd have a heart attack. <laughs> I cannot take, I cannot take all these black people that don't want to be black. Michael Jackson used to be my complexion. I was like a fucking napkin. What happened to Michael? <laughs> what happened to Michael? <laughs> Ray Don Chong, Ray Don Chong. Can Ray Don Chong sleep with a black man in any movie she does? Every movie she does, she sleeps with a white guy. I don't understand this. They interview Ray. She tries to hide her nationality. So, Ray, what nationality are you? Well, my mother's Portuguese and my father's half Mexican. Like, Ray, you're black, okay? Why don't you look in a mirror? Why don't you try to marry a Kennedy and find out how black you really are? Yeah. I have a big issue now. Prison overcrowding. Who gives a fuck? These guys are prisoners. My house, we slept four to a bed. We never tried to hang my father. <laughs> These guys are prisoners. They have no rights. The problem isn't prison overcrowding. The problem is the fact that we have too many repeat offenders. The jails are so nice, they come back twice. <laughs> you gotta make these jails tough. You gotta make this experience they'll never forget. They don't have this problem in other countries, okay? Nobody goes to Siberia twice. <laughs> they don't have this problem in Iran because it's hard to snatch another purse if you don't have another hand. <laughs> We are far too nice to the prisoners. Prisoners get three meals a day. Homeless people don't get shit. It's messed up, man. I think prisoners... I think prisoners should get one meal a day, dinner. Not on a tray like normal people. Just put a cow in the courtyard or whatever happens, happens. They want something to drink, hose them down. They're prisoners. Oh, man. So I'm watching Rocky IV the other day, saying to myself, two white guys fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world? But boy, that's Spielberg something else. Let's face it, white guys cannot box. Black guys fight better. Puerto Ricans fight even better. I guess the lower you go on the social ladder, the better you fight. You think about, for every good Puerto Rican fighter, there's an American Indian that's waiting to kick his ass. You're spoiling me, folks. So here. <laughs> oh, man. Anybody watch the Cosby Show? Yeah. I know a lot of people watch the Cosby Show and say, hey, a black doctor married to a black lawyer? Oh, boy, that's Spielberg something else. <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of Bill Cosby. The whole country's on this We Love Cosby kick. The hell with Cosby. Because Bill Cosby created Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, the most degrading show in TV history. Actually had a guy walk around with that hat pulled over his head. Another guy going, we book over to the stove. The mother name is Babelba. Say, hey, 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 I'm illiterate. I think they should have called that show Amos and Albert. <laughs> then I just went on a date. I took a girl out to the finest restaurant in my neighborhood, the Chinese Bulletproof Takeout. <laughs> Everything in my neighborhood is Bulletproof. Bulletproof Chinese restaurant, Bulletproof liquor store, Bulletproof post store, Bulletproof pizza shop. You slide your slice with a little hole in the wall. The other day, I went and got a bulletproof haircut. I stick my head in, they start cutting around, trimmed up the sides. Good evening, my friend. May I take your order? Um, yo, uh, yeah. Uh, yo, uh, yo, home bee, home boy, home me. Yo, most definitely, I would like... Oh, Sid. Oh, Sid. How about, um, uh, Code 45, more liquor, maybe some power, some cobra, yo, yo, yo. How about some gum, maybe some crayfish? Wait, this is the crayfish. This then, the crayfish. um... All right, word, that'd be, uh, that'd be fly. That'd be fly. You be ill. I mean, I mean, you chill. You chill. Yo, yo, homie, if you could hook me up with all this, I'll be funky fresh off the pack. Hey, Buddha, come here. You ain't gonna believe this. You gotta see this for yourself. It's unbelievable. Do this is Buddha. Do that thing for Buddha. What you say? Funky fresh out the pack? Why are you funnin' me? Oh, man, just do it. What you say? Fast. Tell him what you say. What's that thing? What you want to eat? No, I, I was just trying to talk a little street, because then I figured, you know, that I, I'd fit in a little better. But, uh, you know, I apologize. Hope it didn't offend anyone. Hey, man, you didn't offend me. Last time I heard white folks talk like that was a soul man. Look, you seem like a nice fellow. Very nice. Very handsome. Why don't you tell us what your act is like, and we'll be the judge of whether you stay or go, or come to my place for espresso. Okay, okay, but uh, you have to understand that I'm a generic white comedian. I headline comedy clubs all around the country, and I kill. And uh, 
you know, I make observations. I say things like, hey, who are those guys? You know, like in a 7-Eleven, it's really expensive, but the guy behind the counter isn't from this country? What's the second bit? Well, after that kills, I usually go into the audience and I say things like, can I have a, a place and an occupation? Oh, improv. Yeah. Oh, we hate that shit. It's only one thing we hate more. Then I end with a magic trick. That's it. Bingo. Oh, man. So I recently got arrested. I got arrested in upstate New York for driving too slow. They put me in jail for driving too slow. Put me in jail with killers, rapists, thieves, and I'm in there for driving too slow. First of all, if you're ever in jail and somebody asks you what you're in there for, you got to make it seem like you did something real bad. You got to say, yo, man, what you in here for? See, man, I was driving too slow. <laughs> so, man, I was driving real slow, man. Do it again, punk. So I'm pretty young, and when you're young and you date, what do you do? You go to movies, you get pizza, you have sex, what else? You wait for periods. <laughs> That's all you do, you're constantly waiting for your girlfriend's period to come. You know the longer the period takes, the more special it is. You ever go to those period dinners? Buy a girl some period flowers? You know those period greeting cards? Because it came. So, let's talk about teenage suicide. A nice chipper topic. Now you know why you'll never see me on Star Search. I'm not really scared of teen suicide. I'm not really watching my friends for any symptoms, simply because there's no black kids killing themselves. Black kids kill each other. There's no black kids killing themselves. There's all white kids from the suburbs with cars and allowances. Allowance, I was allowed to go outside. These kids have reasons to live. You think about it, it should be the other way around because a lot of black kids, a lot of black kids come home every day. It's like, oh boy, we live in the projects. We're on welfare. I have no father. My mother's five years older than me. <laughs> Some white kid misses an episode of St. Elsewhere. You got to bolt the windows and lock the medicine chest. I'm sure white kids have problems too. I know they come home and it's like, oh God, my lips are chapped. <laughs> my car's a Nova. <laughs> Wham's breaking up. <laughs> I got a question. Why do we always try to save people that try to commit suicide? We always try to save, as far as I'm concerned, there's just one more nut you gotta look after. Cause look at all the cycles of mass murders that try to commit suicide. Hinkley, Manson, Mark David, Chapman, Lee Harvey, Oswald, the son of Sam, Sirhan, Sirhan. We save these people for what? Next time there's a guy on the roof, the cops just go, Hey you! Don't joke! We're gonna shoot you down! <laughs> hey, thanks a lot! Good night. Darling, I don't care. I need to talk to Maury Schlein immediately. It's a matter of life and death. Okay, I'll hold. Don't you wait. Don't go near an open flame. I like yours too. Too bad it's not removable. Maury, thank God I'm finally getting to speak to you. Okay, I'll hold. It's a very nice nail. Did you have them flown in? Yeah, Maury, I'm here at the place you booked me. I don't think they're gonna like me. You're right. No, they're very, very lovely people. That call better be collect. What kind of crowd is it? Well, do you remember the Watts riots? Yeah, they're a little bit older and more mature. You know, as I look around, there's a lot of fine-looking women in this audience tonight. And I love women. And I know women love to be flattered. Somebody told my wife the other day that she had the body of a 19-year-old girl. I told her to give it back because the shit's getting wrinkled. <laughs> this next young man has a name that sounds like a building on the campus of UCLA College. Is he a building or is he a comedian? You be the judge. Mr. Arsenio Hall. Thank you. I saw a comic's dream yesterday. There's a sign on the Hollywood freeway that says, Next exit, the Braille Institute. <laughs> Who is this sign for? <laughs> Creates a terrible traffic jam. You got blues singers and shit all out in the road trying to find this sign. <laughs> Herb, what's happening? Magic. Boy, that's a playing man right there. The ball playing. Yeah. Yes, indeed. 
this is this is so I can say it like I really felt. That's a playing motherfucker, boy. That's what I really felt, you know. Magic, you see him do shit to people when they family be at home, like damn. You know, ball players have to move and shit because Magic come down court, do a 360 and shit, take out a calculator, start doing income tax shit, you know. Ball still be palm, you know, make some cookies and shit. And I went and saw the Clippers play. <laughs> but chill, it's amazing. Where can you find five black men that can't play fucking basketball? It, it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen, you know? And you can go late and get a front row ticket, you know? And they might ask you to play. <laughs> I saw him play the Celtics doing like Globetrotter shit, you know? It's like with the bucket of confetti and all that shit, you know? The ball with the elastic on it, just... It's hard to play the Celtics. The NBA. That's a terrible thing to say, I know, but you, you look at them, it's hard to check them. You're like, damn, I... You know, the coach is like, don't look in his face, okay? It's hard. And it's it, you know? You watch him, you be calling relatives, turn on the TV, there's a black man with freckles playing guard. I swear, turn on the TV right now. You be trying to adjust your TV and get the freckles out of his face and shit. Damn. The whole team, Kevin McHale, think of anybody, the whole team. Kevin McHale walk around, his knuckles are bleeding and shit, you know? He got them marks on his neck from the bolts they took out years ago. <laughs> Robert Parrish. Always mad. Mad because he ugly and shit. That's how they draft them. They go to colleges. Hey, you with the cyst on your head. Come here, man. Put these glasses on. Yeah. <laughs> Can use you in Boston. If it wasn't for Danny Ainge, they would never get no pussy. Larry, lay down on the bus, man. Lay down. Before they see you and shit, lay down. Because ladies be talking about, is that the Celtics? No, baby, that's the Temptations. I swear to God, that ain't the Celtics. <laughs> Tell Robert to lay down, too. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> we should be telling jokes, but we're working in the kitchen. It's funny as we all your gunners out here fried chicken. We're going to be stars. The folks going to clap. Take so <laughs> the and rap. <laughs> We know we're really good cause our mama told us so Why you look at me? The rest I do not know But we dearly love the creative process And you promised us we could go on tonight, right? Did I say that right? Absolutely, so keep on preparing those chickens, stupid Bet! What's going on? I just read that Bruce Springsteen They offered him 12 million dollars to do a Chrysler commercial He turned it down he must have a lot of money, because for $12 million, I'd do a commercial for the Ku Klux Klan. $12 million? I'd wear the uniform and everything, you know what I'm saying? The Klan, it's a great place to start. Surprise. You know? Boy, they just uh, signed a bill to the um, program when I was a kid a lot. You know, I wanted to be the first black astronaut. I didn't realize what pressure it was, though. Guy Buford was the first black astronaut. You know if something was missing off the shuttle, they was going to blame the brother. <laughs> a lot of pressure up there. I bet every morning they was frisking him and shit. Come on, I didn't steal no tools, man. <laughs> I'm an astronaut just like you. Stop fucking with me, man. I didn't steal no tools. No, they didn't know Jar Tang, man. Stop fucking with me. Also, if you're a proud black man, you don't want to have to call back to Earth and say, yes, NASA, no NASA. You know, you got to think about stuff. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's my job, noticing these things. I was at a party last night. I was watching a guy roll a joint. Why is it, when you watch somebody roll a joint, you never really want to smoke that one. 
You know, I don't care how bad you want it, it's always this guy. Here, smoke this. <laughs> Not the healthiest thing in the world, you know? So why don't you just spit on me, man? I'll pass on the joint. <laughs> Nasty. Oh, gosh. Just came off the road, been traveling around. I enjoy going back east because I get to go to good Baptist churches on Sunday. That's what I miss out here, you know? So out here, they don't... You know what I'm talking about? Good preachers that... That preach and get to the point you don't even know what they're saying, but you know they're preaching. <laughs> you know, they're going, Jesus, he not from the mountain, had a cross on his back, had a Lord out here, Lord over there. Say, Lord, oh Lord, Lord, oh Lord. Why? You know, that's the preachers I'm talking about, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you can't even follow him. You put the Bible down. See it, go on, preach, you know. <laughs> you know what I did? I went to Jesse Jackson's church. I was in Chicago, and Jesse has a church on the south side, and it's rough. I mean, they have, like, like church. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Real church, where they have scalpers out front, you know, cover charge and shit, you know? I got two in the front, man. Come in. <laughs> people were in line to get in there and see him. And during the sermon, people was doing the wave and shit. It was, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Jesse can preach. Jesse used to preach when he was running for president. Yeah, Jesse used to have those speeches that make you have them bumps and shit. You'd be, damn, Jesse, shit. <laughs> Jesse, come on. Our time has come. Y'all don't hear me? <laughs> I said our time has come. For so long, they said there's light at the end of the tunnel. They never told us it was a train. <laughs> Our time has come. Yeah. Jesse would get on your nerves at home, though. <laughs> he drive a woman crazy. Baby, wake up! <laughs> My time has come. <laughs> My name is Arsenio. Enjoy yourself. Of course I'm a professional, Maury. That's not the point. It's just that I don't think my bar mitzvah bit is going to play here. Yeah, you're right about that. Sammy Davis Jr. tried some of that shit here, and it didn't work for him either. You hear that, Maury? It didn't work for Sammy either. Now just get me out of here. Please, I'm overreacting. I'm overreacting. I'm overreacting. Okay, I'll hold. This is an outrage. This is dubious. I can't believe he did this to me. The man's a celebrity. He's royalty. It's just a privilege to be near him. Hey, man, I wasn't even expecting a tip, but I can't believe the Webster Shore changed me. That cheap little bastard. You know, I don't think that's really Webster. I think it's a tight wad Webster lookalike. Yeah, you know, that's the only possible explanation. I know deep down in my heart that the real Webster is a wonderful human being and a great dramatic actor as well. I'm so excited I can't even cook. This is our big night, man. I can feel it. We're gonna go on tonight. We're gonna be stupid fresh, man. We're gonna be stupid fresh. You know, there could be somebody out there important to discover us. By this time next year, we could be collecting Academy Awards, man. I can see now. Thank you, Sly, man. God bless you and good luck with Rocky 8. Oh, gosh such an honor. This is such an honor. I'd like to say thank you to my lovely wife who's put up with a lot. God, Janet Jackson, wherever you are, babe, I love you. To all my, all my in-laws, Michael Jackson and Tito and Emmanuel Lewis, I don't want to leave out anybody. Oh, gosh. My director, Mr. John Houston. John, this is for you, man. <laughs> Thanks for directing me in Son of Shaft. <laughs> oh, and my co-star, Vanity. Vanity, we did a love scene and you were totally nude. That meant a lot to me. Love you, babe. You like me. You really like me. Shit, man. That's what you're gonna do? What the fuck is wrong with that? Yo, man, I do it totally different. Thanks, Sly. 
First of all, here's some of the people I don't want to thank. I don't want to thank my third grade teacher, Mr. Brett, who told me that my future lied in buffing. That's right, I'm collecting an Academy Award and you're a grown man teaching the third grade. Second of all, the Kim Brown who never wanted to go out with me. You big buck tooth bitch. I wouldn't give you five cents to get cheese on a Whopper. If the good die young, I get your ugly ass to live forever. Wanna say what's up to my homeboys, Run DMC, and my wife, Lisa Bonet. You ain't married to no Lisa Bonet, man. Get the fuck out of here. You ready to say hello to Oprah? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Townsend. Townsend. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? You guys been having a good time so far? Yeah. It's good. It's good. My name is Robert Townsend, and uh, I really feel good right now about the climate of what's going on in the country. You know, this whole thing with say no to drugs. But, you know, I disagree because they should have a campaign that say say no to alcohol because every year millions of people are killed by drunk drivers. You, ne you never hear anybody get killed by a coke driver because at least coke drivers are alert. Coke driver! Gotta get to the rock house! Coke driver! God! Must be a drunk driver! So I don't drink anymore. I want to be a good role model for my kids when I finally have kids. I don't have any kids right now, but uh, I can't wait, you know? And I was thinking the other day that if I continue to be successful, my kids are going to be rich. They'll go to the best schools, best education. They'll talk differently. Father, <laughs> father, tell us about when you were a nigger, father. <laughs> Did you eat the government cheese, father? <laughs> were you constipated too, father? <laughs> but I still have a hard time, I still have a hard time dating, you know, because dating to me, it's like it takes a lot of courage to go to a nightclub and ask a woman to dance. I mean, especially if you're not drunk. If you're drunk, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, you want to dance, do you? Fuck it, bitch. Because if I ask a woman to dance and she says no, it, hurt, it hurts a lot. It like she says no in slow motion. You know, it's like, would you like to dance? No, no, not with you. And it's not the fact that she says no, it's the fact that I think everybody in the room saw it. Like the guys at the bar. Damn, man, you see the way she turned that dude down, man? Damn, if I was him, I'd go home, man. The DJ. I'd like to play this record for that homeboy that was just rejected. It takes a fool to learn that love don't love nobody. The waitress. I know you want another drink the way she turned your ass down. Yeah, the cool guys got the girl. And women used to give me the wrong number all the time. I used to deny it. I'm telling you, man, she gave you the wrong number. She gave you the wrong number. Don't no woman have no 800 number? <laughs> yeah. And you know, there was a time, you know, you could mess around. Like, now I'm afraid to mess around. Now a one-night stand could be a one-night stand. No, because there was a time you can go to a disco, you know, mess around, go to, the, go to the doctor, get a shot in your butt, that was it, you know. See you later, doc, thanks. Party, party. Now you wait for your results with your mouth open. Mr. Townsend, we've got your results back. <laughs> yeah, doc, what is it? I can take it. Hello, mama? Yeah, it's just syphilis, that's all. I might go blind, my hair might fall out, that's basically it. Praise the Lord. Because a lot of times when I go to discos, it's like, it's one thing to, to ask a girl to dance, it's another thing to get her. You know what I mean? To get her, it's like, the DJ gives you your cue. This is the last record. It's an oldie but a goldie by El DeBarge. Love me in a special way. 
Love me in a special way. What more could I say? Love me now. Just go over there and say something to her, man. Just go over there and say something. She's fine. Love me in a special, special way. Would you like to dance? You would? Love me in a special way. What more could I say? She's really nice. You gotta rap, Rob. You gotta rap, man. This is your shot, brother. This is your shot. Rap, rap. Uh, what's your name? Deborah. Uh, my name is Robert. Well, that's, that's a pretty name. That's a pretty name. No, really, it is. Really, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't ask her that, man. Don't ask her that. Everybody ask her that, man. Don't say that. What sign are you? Scorpio? Scorpio? Freak! She's a freak! Jackpot! Jackpot! <laughs> what more could I see? So, so, so what kind of things you like to do? Horseback ride? Yeah, right. <laughs> In a special way. So, uh, so you know, you just, you just seem really nice. Um, could I, you know, you want to go to breakfast later? So, I mean, well, can I get your phone number? Can I call you sometimes? Oh, you don't have no phone. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So, wow, she, feel, she really feels nice. Wow. She really feels nice. Oh, her body's so soft. Well, I could fall in love with a girl like this. Oh, I can't believe this is happening. Oh, this is too embarrassing. Oh, I can't believe this. Love me in a special way. What more could I say? No, no it's just a Chicago thing. It's a Chicago thing. Damn. Oh, the record's over with. Oh, can, can, I, can I walk you to your car? No, can I walk you to your car? No, 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 I'm not trying to rap or nothing like that. You know, I mean, I just, can I just walk you to your car? I mean, I think you're attractive and everything. I mean, whoa, this is a nice car. 87 BMW, wow. And she ain't got no phone. <laughs> uh, you do have a number? Oh, great, great, great. Well, I mean, oh, because I know a lot of guys that jive, you know, and I'm not like those other guys, you know. Yeah, yeah. Every time I think of love me in a special way, I'm going to think of you. No, really, I am. I really, I am. I am. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hey, well, you take care of yourself, you know. Hey, love me in a special way. You take care. You take care. I got your number. I'll call you. Beep, 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 beep. Take care. Yeah, I'm going to call her when I get home. 1-800. You guys have been great. Thank you very much.